Well, uh, one, let me just uh, hats off the Fiesta Bowl for a great week for, for our team and our program and our staff. Uh, when you're a Division II, you can screw up a lot, and I did, and nobody knows. Uh, but you can really build who you are and the values that you believe in and the foundation. And uh, for, for our staff, a lot of those guys have been with me a long time. We started there and, and have had the fortunate to work up to, to, this, uh, to this moment. And we always look back uh, to remember where you came from. I think that's important and the things that you've had to overcome, the different adversity. Um, but uh, we're here today because of those young men in 2009 when I was at North Greenville that chose to buy into to, uh, our belief system and our values there, and they helped propel us to this day. So anytime that we get to a big moment, I always look back on them fondly. Thank you. And to the far left, Coach Dan Lanning led Oregon to an 11-2 and record. This is Oregon's fourth trip to the Fiesta Bowl with a 2-1 and record. Coach was defensive coordinator for the national champion Georgia Bulldogs before taking over in Eugene. I just referenced a whole lot of offensive stats here, but as a defensive-minded coach, talk to me a little bit about your defense and your defensive philosophy here with the Ducks. Yeah, it's about building. It's about growth, and it's really um, the same thing across you know all avenues: offense, defense, and special teams. But we want to be aggressive. You know, uh, playing a, a team like Liberty, it makes it really challenging because if you're aggressive, they take advantage of it, and uh, they make you play on islands. Um, you know, and, and tackle well, and all those things are really important when it comes to bowl games. So. You know, for us, we want guys to play with relentless effort. We want to limit the thinking out there, but hopefully create some confusion for the offense um, and, and accentuate what our players do really well. Thank you both. We're going to open up the floor for questions. If you can please raise your hand. We have Mike Runners, Diane, and Brittany on either side. If you could identify yourself uh, before asking the question, that'd be great. Then once we're done with questions and answers, we'll go over and do a photo op at the end. Let's go, in the, let's go in the way back. We, we always start in front, so let's go on the back camera platform today and start in back. Uh, Dan, yesterday uh, Coach Chadwell made a comment about how this game's pretty rare with so many players opting in and how, you know, in bowl season that's a rarity these days. What are your thoughts on those comments in, in the state of bowl season in general right now? You know, Coach Chadwell and I were just talking about it before we came in here. And, uh, you know, bowl season is supposed to be something that's really phenomenal. It's supposed to be an opportunity for guys to get to play together one last time before um, a lot of guys' journeys take different directions and go in different ways. And, you know, that's something that I, th I know he appreciates. It's certainly something that I appreciate. I know James was fighting for us to have, like, a Florida State-Georgia-type game. Um, but us around here, we, lo we love seeing our players play. We love seeing our guys compete. They signed up to be a part of a team for, for the long haul. Um, you know, they, they want – to go out there with their teammates one last time. And uh, when you have great players, like the great players on his team that sign up to say, hey, let's do it, and, and the players on our team that sign up to do it, that's what the fans want, that's what the players want. That's the experience that both season's about to be about. Just to follow up on that, the week of activities, we saw your team, uh, Liberty, building wagons with Girl Scouts the other day, and Dan, I saw you out on the field with Special Olympics and Mikey's League yesterday. Just describe the week. You talked about the bowl experience, but maybe the highlights of the week so far. Well, I'll, I'll apologize to the Girl Scouts. I don't know if our wagons were any good. <laughs> so first, uh, please don't take that. And I hope we play better than we built wagons, or it's a long day for us tomorrow. But uh, I, I think any time you come uh, you know, to, to, to a bowl site and you have the opportunity to invest uh, in local community and give back, um, young people, we, we put a lot on them in football. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of things to do. But you also you want to remind them it's just a game, and they're looked up to, you know. And the Girl Scouts, we we had a great experience, and there was this young girl. Her mom was there, and they're they're announcing what they're doing, and she starts bawling. She's crying because she's scared. And one of our players goes over there and gives her a hug and said, "Hey, you work with me, uh, and we're gonna make it right." And uh, they actually won the the competition. Her little side, and, and she's in one of the pictures, smiling like like it's the best thing, the best day she's ever had in her life. And, uh, you know, that's what that's about, you know, and, and it was a great reminder for our, for our guys that, uh, man, you have such an impact. Yeah, certainly for us, we got, we got an opportunity to work with, um, you know, Special Olympics group, and I think what it provides is perspective. Um, our players, you know, we always talk about Ducks Do More. We try to find opportunities to do some community service within our community, but it's fun to get to do it somewhere else. And uh, I think we made some, some uh, young men and, and women's day yesterday, getting the opportunity to spend time with them, watch them, you know, compete in some football drills and have a lot of fun. And I was really proud of the way our players uh, were able to celebrate those moments with the, with the youth and the community here. Thank you, coaches. We'll go James. 
Dan, you alluded to the Orange Bowl, uh, having worked for both of those coaches, just your thoughts in general on that, how that game came to be, and then on Kirby's comments after the game saying that things in college football need to be fixed and people need to ask what they want out of these experiences, even with the expanded playoff next year. Yeah, I just think we all know that it, you know at the end of the season, these games are best when the best players get to play in these games and they get to compete. And I think what uh, Coach Smart said, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. Um, you know, there, when when there's guys getting pulled in so many different directions at the end of the season, I don't know what the answer is to create some tie-in and some buy-in for them to be able to compete in these games. You know, you play an entire career in college football, and then all of a sudden you're not able to play in your last game. You know, I think that's sad, you know, and these, these games mean something. They certainly mean something to school. They, they mean something to the fans. Um, and I think everybody wants to see, you know, everybody's best. And um, what the answer is to that, I don't know. I don't, I don't get paid to figure that part out. But um, ultimately, when you have a great culture, when you have, um, you know, good players that, that commit, when you have a quarterback like Bo Nix to say, hey, I want to play in this game, I certainly think uh, it makes other people around him want to go compete. And, and that's the best of college football when that happens. Brittany, we're going to go front row right here, please. Dan, a lot has been known about what Oregon's accomplished this year, and it's been well known nationally. What have you learned about what Liberty has accomplished from starting to game plan them to now 24-ish hours before kickoff? Yeah, I've, I've uh, you know, I know I'm, I'm younger, but I've coached football for a long time, and I haven't been uh, around an undefeated team very often, right? That's a really unique experience. So when you just turn on the film and you see a team that's able to go unscathed through their conference, able to win uh, some close games and then, you know, have some blowouts, you see a team that competes um, at the ultimate level. Um, they play hard for each other in every single unit. Um, they create explosive plays. They, they take care of the ball. Um, they do a good job of ripping the ball away from the opponent. So they make it challenging. And uh, that's credit Coach Chadwell and the job that he's done. But obviously, they're a really dynamic team. Uh, that's, you know, one of four teams, I believe, in college football that, that hasn't lost a game. So that speaks, I guess, three now. Three teams in college football that haven't lost a game. So it speaks volumes to the job that he's done. Thank you. Go in the back to Matt on the, on the platform, Dane. I guess for both coaches, it's been a month since you've played. How do you replicate the physicality that's going to happen tomorrow and be prepared for that after such a long layoff? Good. Yeah, it's, it's a fine line, right? Uh, you know, I walked in the room this morning and told Coach, I'm ready to play, right? We've been practicing for a long time. You know, there's a benefit, though, that, you know, for us, we had 13 practices um, where it's almost an additional spring ball. It's an opportunity for development for you know, young players and older players in your, in, uh, on your team, you know, what always sticks out to me is the very first game of the season, it's the most missed tackles in college football is game one, right? And then the most uh, missed tackles after that is bowl season, right? And it really shows that, you know, people probably aren't as physical within bowl prep. They, they don't tackle as frequently in bowl prep. And I think that's something that's a fine line. You have to find that balance of uh, creating what has to happen to be successful in football. Um, but also take care of your players in that avenue. So it's a little bit like a spring ball for the first, uh, first few practices where you're really working development, and then you have to start breaking down and getting into the team that you're about to play. Yeah, ours was very similar. Um, I think we actually we had ended up having 13 as well. Uh, and the first you know, four or five were a lot of uh, working on Liberty things that we needed. to get. And we do have some young guys that are actually going to play in the game that uh, were red-shirted. And so trying to get them as many opportunities that uh, – they can to get them up to speed. We can't replicate who they are and what they do when we go into preparing for them. Uh, obviously, you're going to put the best you know game plan forward that you can. But we tried to use it as an extension of uh, some spring and getting some young guys ready, and and uh, and still try to practice physical and get ready for what the challenge is you know in the game. But it's hard. Uh, I don't know if anybody has a great answer to that. Next question over here to the right, halfway back. Coach Chadwell, you mentioned how special it is to reach a New Year's Six game with the coaching staff that you've been with for so long. How much does it help from a game prep and a game planning standpoint when you know you've worked with these guys from the very beginning? Well, it helps a lot. I try to stay out of the way, to be honest with you, because uh, I mess it up half the time. You know, I mean the the. Uh, when you when you have worked together and you have continuity and consistency, they, you know it's not like you go in and hey, what do you think about this? We all have you know similar ideas of how we want to, whether that's offense or defense, attack and do different things, and so uh, it helps us um, you know stay focused on what we know or what we believe can work. 
um, and it uh, it helps with our communication, you know. And and uh, I think when you have when you've been around each other that long and you know what each other likes, it, it makes it. I don't say it's easy to game plan for anybody, especially our guys to the left, but you know what your expectations are and how you want to try to play your best. Go here to the left. Steve Hellwick, SB Nation. Coach Lanning, it seemed like the difference between last year's squad and this year's squad, which made the New Year Six, was defensive improvement. How would you just dissect the growth of this unit and how they've made that leap this year? Yeah, a lot of the things I've mentioned, you know, so far, you have to be a good tackling team to be a good defense. You know, it starts there, um, you know, and I think we've been uh, able to play more players up front, which allows you to be fresh. And when, you know, for us, we don't talk about having 11 starters. We, we say if you're good enough, you're old enough. Um, if you're able to contribute, we want you to contribute. The more guys you can get involved uh, to play great team defense, the better you're going to be able to play when you have guys on the field that are fresh. Um, and then just to understand the situations. Playing defense in college football is tough. You see so many different looks from so many different teams. You know, what we're about to face for, uh, versus Liberty is different than any team we've played so far this season. So being able to prepare for, for multiple teams, that takes smart players. It takes great communicators. Um, so all those things contribute to, to defensive success. Go in the back right here with Nick. Coach, have you thought much about what your last message to your guys is going to be tomorrow if it's a – do you have a speech prepared? Do you, how, how do you go into something like that, just the last game of the year, the biggest game? Uh, I, I think just running out, I, I think the last thing I'll tell them is that, uh, you know, be in the moment, but don't be of the moment, you know, because it's the biggest one that uh, our group of people have played in, and I don't want it to be too big for them, that they, hey, they belong here, they've earned the right to be here, so enjoy it, um, but don't let it be too big. Back left on the camera platform. Uh, this is really for both of you, but obviously with coaches studying other coaches all around the country, Coach Chadwell being an offensive innovator, Coach Landing coming up through the defensive ranks, when did each of you kind of pop up on each other's radars as somebody to study and watch? I don't, I don't know how much you get time in college football to spend time watching another team. Um, I'll say this, you know, I was a GA, I believe when Coach was at Charleston Southern uh, there at Alabama, and it's – um, you know, and something they, and that, they beat us pretty bad, so don't take that for what that was. <laughs> <laughs> well, we spent an awful lot of time preparing that game, I'll say that. But uh, you can't watch college football over the last few years and not recognize what Coach Chadwell's done um, and the success that he's had, whether that's at Coastal. You know, he speaks about the continuity with his team. That makes you have to do a deep dive when you walk in. And, and at times you talk about his coaches chasing ghosts. We've chased a lot of ghosts this week. We've, we've watched a lot of film. We've gone back to film at Coastal and, um, you know, film from, from his past and that continuity makes it awful tough but what you see is winning football right and I think both of our programs you know you talk about programs that have had winning football good teams and uh, it's something you admire you know it's something that you you hope to do as a coach and he's done a phenomenal job of getting his guys prepared and ready and we certainly want to do the same on our side and I would echo um you always look back where somebody's came from, and obviously I tried to forget that Alabama game because it was over as soon as kick, the ball kicked off. Uh, but uh, guys that do well, I, I'm, I, I love watching teams that play hard, and they seem to play for each other. And he's obviously got that where he's at, and, that, and he's been around great people that make that happen, Coach Saban, Coach Smart. Uh, and I, I respect those things. You, you, football is such a hard sport, and they get a, a group of young people to buy into each other and the culture is hard to do. Uh, and in the two years that he's been, you know, able to do this is something that's um, um, amazing, to be honest with you, in, in today's world. And so, but really aware of where he came from and what he's done and what he's been able to accomplish. And, and uh, I just hope he takes it easy on us tomorrow. Go, James, in the front row, please. For both coaches, uh, this isn't one of the bowl games that's going to have the uh, sideline uh, tablets or in-helmet communication, but assuming you both support such a system, how many players is the right number of players in terms of being mic'd up besides, or radioed up as it is, uh, besides the quarterback? Like how many green dots on defense? Or would you prefer something like Gallaudet's universities using with the uh, LED displays and the helmets? We've, we've not put a lot of time into that. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, for us, if we, if we were going to do it offensively, I, I wouldn't want a couple at least. Uh, you know, for, uh, for, for, for our standpoint, I think defense, I'd want a couple. Uh, but we've not really done a deep dive into really seeing what's best um, right now. 
Um, I know some, I watched some, some teams that used it, you know, and some of it didn't work on the sidelines and some of those things. I'm sure that's where we're heading after this, this semester, or not semester, after this season. Uh, but um, not spend a lot of time on thinking about it right now. Yeah, similar to Coach. You know, um, he, he said it earlier, you know, as a coach, you don't want to mess it up. It's about your players playing. And uh, to try to go, you know, institute something within a bowl game, it's, it's pretty difficult to say you've played a certain way all season and then now you're going to change the way you do it. So I think spring ball, uh, <coughs> having the opportunity to explore that and see what it looks like is something that, that matters. I know in uh, NFL games that communication gets shut off, you know, after a certain point. I don't think that's set up that way currently uh, in uh, college games, the, the teams that are deciding to do that. So it's something we have to explore. It's something you have to practice if you want to be good at it. Let's talk about your quarterbacks. Caden on one side and Bo on the other. How do you utilize your quarterbacks and have that trust in your quarterback as that adjunct leader on the field? Well, Caden, Caden obviously has had an impressive season for us. And, and uh, you know, when, when we got there in the spring, uh, we came out of the spring, and I, you would think we're crazy. He's a you know, conference player of the year. But, you know, we, we didn't know who we had. You know, he, he was a talented individual, but, um, he was not bought into being that leader. And he made a, a complete 180 through the summer as he was earning, earning the right to be the starter. Uh, and he's been a tremendous leader for us, you know, on and off the field. He's no doubt talented, I mean, running and, and throwing. But the biggest improvement he made was knowing that those guys count on him to make right decisions. And, and that's what he embraced. And, and wholeheartedly, that's the reason why we're here today is because he did embrace that. Uh, and that he knew that, hey, these guys count on me to go out and be my best, not only on the game day, I was going to say every Saturday, but we played on Tuesdays and Thursdays and all the different <laughs> stuff, um, but also practicing and, and coming ready to go. And um, he, he's, he's been tremendous from that aspect, and no doubt that's why we're here today. Yeah, something I really value in coaches are, is the ability to adapt and change your personnel. As a former high school coach, that's something that sticks out to me is you got to be able to take what your guys do really well and accentuate that on the football field. And obviously, we have a tremendous player in Bo Nix um, who we've been able to really play into his strengths, but he's also taken the things that he knew he wanted to get better at and improve. And it's about finding that balance of letting a guy play free within the system but be a great decision maker as it happens. And obviously that's happened with Caden. You know, not only has he done a good job in the passing game, but he's a thousand yard rusher. That's a unique challenge, um, you know, that that presents. And I think Bo's the same thing. He's, he's been able to find ways to do it with his legs and his arm. He's been a, a great decision maker for us. Uh, he, he does a lot of communication on the field that I think is really evident, you know, getting us in the right play. Um, and then obviously the way he leads off the field, the kind of person he is.